Hello, welcome to Focus. I'm your host, Mark Warnock, and today we're here with Justin Chassey, the Vice President of the Connecticut Trauma Museum. A little divulge, me and Justin did go to high school together, so if it's a little more lackadaisical interview than usual, that's the reason why. So how you doing, Justin? How's, it, how's things been going? I'm really well, Mark. Uh, no complaints, just been busy. It's been, uh, it's been a tough year and a half with COVID and everything else, but we're all, uh, we're all hanging in there, which is good. How are you? I'm fine. Thanks for asking. So tell me, uh, I'm assuming most of the people who watch the show know a little bit about the Tron Museum. People have either stopped there, driven by, seen it, seen it there. But tell me a little bit more about what the, the Connecticut Tron Museum is and what you guys do. Well, the Connecticut Trolley Museum was founded in 1940, and the whole aspect of our organization was to preserve, protect, and promote a way of life that is no longer. So it was all about preserving these trolley cars and a bygone era. And what three gentlemen who started the museum didn't realize is it caught on. Uh, they just started collecting cars, and this is all during World War II to after World War II. So not realizing how many people had an interest in these cars still and how much they loved them and started missing them from city streets and their towns and, and neighborhoods that when they saw that these cars were being saved and protected, they, they started coming to see us. They just wanted to see the cars again. And before you know it, they had a couple hundred feet of track built. They had the overhead up to run the trolley and people started paying exactly what the ride cost way back in the day, a nickel a ride. And from there, 81 years later, we've got a beautiful 17 acre campus. We have a mile and a half of right of way. We own another mile and a half all the way down into Broadbrook, Connecticut, that hopefully someday we'll get close to, not exactly through Broadbrook, but at least close to it, uh, definitely by the Scantic River. And we just want to keep growing and building and showing folks a different way of life. We are definitely a living history museum. We're active. These cars get restored. They're running. People can ride them. They can touch them. They can see what these cars were like. You have like, like as a, I've been there multiple times. I'm a trained nut. So much so that where I live now, there's really a, freight train line behind the house behind across the street from me so I hear trains all the time so I love Excellent. it I'm excited about the trains since I was a kid so I've always been wanting to be into trains but from afar I don't think I could handle driving one but uh tell me about how you got involved in the Tron Museum well it's a funny story um one of the longtime members Don Snellgrove um his son Michael Snellgrove needed driver's ed lessons. Um, many people don't realize that my family owned driving schools in the state of Connecticut and my mom was a driver ed instructor. So um, my mom taught Mike how to drive a car and he then talked about the trolley museum. So as a kid, we started going there. It wasn't until I moved to Enfield at around uh, 10, 11 years old, 11 years old, that I realized that I was literally a mile from the museum. And my mom and I went down, she bought a family membership and I started volunteering since I was 11. I'll say it, I'm 43 and I've been with the museum that long. So it's, it's got a lot of meaning for me. Uh, it's a great place. And I love watching over the years, how we've progressed, we've moved forward. You know, I can look back after 30 years of volunteering there and go, hey, I remember when we started that project to, wow, I can't believe this is done. And it's been like, wow, it's 10 years now. So it's really nice seeing the line of progression as we get more and more accomplished on the museum's property. Now, you guys have the huge, I think, I think you guys call it the station building. That the visitor built, center. Yeah, not, not too long ago. Uh, how many trolley cars do you guys have in there so that building started uh its construction in the late 80s early 90s and was finished and it sat empty for a while because we were raising funds to get our certificate of occupancy so there's a lot of things you have to go through especially you know so people can walk through 
Um, that building itself can hold anywhere between eight to 12 trolley cars on display at any given time. We also have the ability to roll cars out so we can have larger events or special events, private events right there in our own facility. That's awesome. So not only do you guys uh, have the Tron Museum, you guys also house the Connecticut, um, is it the Connecticut Fire Museum or is it just the Northern Connecticut Fire Museum? No, it's sure. the Connecticut Fire okay. Museum. Um, it's, it's run by Bert Johansson, who has been a member, ready for this? He just celebrated 60 years wow. of being part of our museum. Now the museum's only 81 years old. So Bert's been yeah. here. He was there since the brick was laid. <laughs> pretty much. Um, brick, uh, Bert runs the, the fire museum and bus museum, which is located toward the rear of the museum's property. And when you come to visit the museum, not only does your ticket get you into the, the museum itself, the visitor center to see all of our displays, all of our history exhibits and everything else, which by the way, we're constantly trying to change and update. We've got a new exhibit that's going to be opening very soon, which is going to be amazing. We're so excited for it. Uh, that's going to be on display for 2022 once we get through our what we call our holiday or busy season between now and December. But your ticket gets you in to see all those cars, all the exhibits. You get to ride a variety of cars. And then toward the rear of the museum, the back side where the visitor center is, you can walk through and see all the fire trucks that they have on display, they, including Connecticut company buses, a variety of other buses, tons and tons of different fire apparatus and, and history uniforms. The fire museum is also home to the fire truck that responded to the great circus fire in Hartford, Connecticut. We're the only, they're the only museum that has that. So really, really impressive collection. Yeah, so you guys have, like you said, you guys have been there for 80 years. So I'm assuming that the eight to 12 cars that you said you have now, have you not, I'm sure, I'm thinking you probably haven't had those this whole 80 year time. How, how, what's like been the turnaround for how many cars you guys have had in and out of the museum? We've been collecting cars since the 1940s. So of the, the eight cars that are in the building, you have another barn called Kelly Barn that holds six fully operating cars that passengers and guests, visitors get to ride on. We have other barns throughout the museum's property that hold cars that are either in process of restoration, requiring restoration, or waiting on a decision to be made. As many people know in the museum industry, especially in railroad type of museum industries, it's very difficult to keep these cars going restoration it costs hundreds of thousands of dollars just to restore one car and we're a nonprofit historic organization so 96 percent of the people on that museum's property including myself are volunteers people don't get paid to come in for any of these events for restoration to work on the railroad the track the overhead wire so it's it's a big labor of love. It's a lot of dedication. So going off of that, what you were just saying, uh, through this past year, everyone's been going through this pandemic that we're all going through. Uh, how has that affected the museum? With like, how long do you guys have to shut down? And how has that been coming back into being open again? Yeah, that was that was very difficult. Um, we were closed for quite a bit of 2020. And then toward, I want to say midsummer, we, we started opening on a very limited schedule, not the six days a week that we were used to. Um, our current executive director, she was our business manager. She recently got promoted this summer to become our executive director. And that is Gina Maria Allenberti. And you can always reach out to her through the Trolley Museum's website or our telephone number. And Gina came up with programs. Uh, she came up with some amazing programs that basically gave social distancing, but still engaging folks in trying to get out of the house, break the norm, especially families with kids. That was so important. So we added additional events like Storytime Trolley, which was great. 
being able to put people on an open car, bring them out to the line. Nobody was packed into a small space, a lot of social distancing, but we read stories to kids and they loved it. Uh, we did everything we possibly could to try and survive. And Gina was completely instrumental in putting together these plans and these actions. She did an amazing job for the organization as a whole. When we thought we wouldn't make money, we ended up making some money to survive. Other good things that happened for us was the PPP loans. We were able to pay Gina. We were able to pay another employee to make sure that the cars were running and safe and keep things really going on the property. And then our amazing volunteers. We had to have cleaning protocols. We had to get certified by the state of Connecticut. We had to be very careful what we used for cleaning products because the average age of our cars, Mark, is 104 years old. So you can't just use Lysol. You can't just use bleach wipes. You got to be very careful. So we had to find products that cost the museum money just to be able to keep these cars clean and safe and sanitized. And every single one of our volunteers went through protocol training. And the amazing part is they did a great job making our guests and visitors, customers feel welcome, felt safe, felt comfortable. We had to design our own sanitation stations. We had to mark off six foot distancing throughout the entire visitor center. It was a big labor of love just to keep us open, but it was worth it. Again, a great charge led by our executive director, Gina. She did an amazing job. Now you guys are back open somewhat, I mean, back to what you normally would be. So what is coming up at the Tron Museum in the next, like if people could be looking forward to, like you said, the, the, the Christmas light display that you guys usually do with the train, the trolleys is going on. But what else is going on at the Tron Museum? Well, right now we are running our pumpkin patch event, which again, Gina leading the charge, doing an amazing job for us. So pumpkin patch is basically Friday, Saturday, and Sunday during the day where you get to come out, you get yourself a beautiful trolley ride. You get to see all the fall foliage that New England is famous for, especially on our line, because our line just has a nice canopy of trees all the way down, as you've seen, Mark. And if you haven't seen us, come out and definitely see it because it's a nice ride. Uh, we have some vendors that show up making popcorn, different events, which is great. So pumpkin patch, you get a trolley ride. We bring you out to Skylark Airport, where we have a giant field full of pumpkins that the kids get to go pick their own pumpkin. They get back onto the trolley, they finish up their ride, they get back to the visitor center where we have a corn crib for kids to play in. We have a hay maze and we have photo opportunities for the kids and families alike. We have decoration stations inside the building, our visitor center itself. We have a lot of activities. Then at night, it changes. That's when Rails to the Dark Side starts from 7 to 9.30 p.m. And that's that's a little bit more PG-13, you know, maybe 12-year-olds can get away yeah. with it going yeah. with mom maybe. and dad. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's definitely a little intense, yeah. but it's a lot of fun. And it's a tradition we we had done for years. I remember being, being a, a younger kid working the event. And I say kid because I was, you know, in my teens, early 20s. And the museum had stopped it for a little while. The past eight, 10 years, we brought Rails back. It was well received in the community. People missed us. We get people who come as far as New York State because we're the only museum that's actually doing a haunted ride that takes you on a trolley, brings you into the middle of the woods in the dark, and you don't know what's gonna happen. We mm. have a full haunted house We've converted that giant visitor center into a, an amazing haunted house. And again, this entire event, Mark, is all run by volunteers. So That's great. That's it, great. I know you guys got amazing. so much going on. Yeah. During the summertime, you got the farmer's market that if people's for during the summertime. And there's always, like you were saying, exhibits are changing all the time. So uh, we've talked about the museum so much. But uh, tell people if people are watching and they're thinking, hey, I want to maybe volunteer with the Tron Museum or donate to the Tron Museum, how do people go about doing that? So if people are interested in becoming members 
of the museum and start volunteering their time. We welcome everybody. You know, our museum is a welcoming, all-inclusive museum. <clears throat> We're very proud of that fact. We welcome people from all walks of life, families. If you have a special skill, you're an electrician. We need electricians. They run on electricity. It's always good to have woodworkers, steel workers, anything like that. That helps us. You could be part of saving a car that maybe is five, 10 years out from restoration, but with your skill set, we can start working on that car a little bit sooner. It's, it's a big labor of love. We have folks from all walks of life who we do training and we teach and we, and we show people how, how it needs to be done, which is great. It's a great learning experience. It's a great place to be around with everybody. And it's a lot of fun. Now, for someone who is watching this and might never have been to the Tron Museum, where are you located? So people were looking for the Tron Museum. Well, you got to come and visit for sure. We are at 58 oh, yeah, North Road, Route 140 in East Windsor, Connecticut. We're right down the road from uh, Sophia's Restaurant, Golden Gavel Auctions. So we're right there on North Road, Route 140. And our hours are on our website at www.connecticuttrolleymuseum.com. Um, there's, like I said, there's always something going on. We always have activities. Gina puts together an entire year's worth of events from social events to beer and wine tastings. Her summer concert series on Friday nights has been a big hit. And it's been really important, especially we've gotten a lot of people thanking her, thanking us for having these events, especially during COVID because they were able to sit outside. They were able to enjoy family and their friends and their little groups, mm -hmm. but also enjoy live music. So. All these things help us keep moving forward. We rely on our financial team who goes out for major donations. We rely on the public coming to visit us. That's how we stay open. That's how we stay afloat. That's, it's, it's a great place. I've gone there. I can't even tell you the amount of times I've, I've gone to the Toronto Museum. And I encourage everybody to go check out the Toronto Museum if you've never been there before. No matter what age you are, you're going to find something that you're going to be like, wow, this is super cool. And I'm going to keep coming back all the time. So thank you, Justin, for your time. I know you're busy. You have a lot of stuff going on. I see all your walkie talkies behind you. So I know you have a lot of things to report on and get in touch with. But uh, thanks again for giving us some time. And do you have one more thing? I see. We, we have one more event after okay. our Halloween and our pumpkin patch. Um, this will be our 41st, 41st or 42nd year of doing Winterfest. And yes. basically the Trolley Museum has built and designed its own Christmas lights that would have been found many years ago on Main Street USA when trolleys ran. There's 600 volt Christmas lights and we decorate our entire mile and a half with Christmas lights. We set up Christmas scenes along the entire railroad and we decorate the entire visitor center from top to bottom in a winter wonderland we have model train exhibits, tons of stuff for the kids and family to do. And Santa has his own electric sleigh. That's pretty awesome. And it is yeah. an experience. And it's a load. I remember going as a kid. I remember going when I was older. And it's still the best going down that trolley line with the, the lights over top and people singing Christmas carols. It's an experience that you have to check out and enjoy. It's tradition. Yeah, it's, it's an East Winter tradition, as they say. Uh, but thanks again for coming on. I appreciate you giving us some time and uh, we'll you. see you here next time on Focus. Thank you.